Hey everybody and welcome back to more Milkmaid of the Milky Way, a game in which I speak like Dr. Seuss. So what were we doing? I completely forgot. Oh yeah, we found a weird glowy thing. Our cow was in the lake. Hello cow, nice to see you're not in the lake anymore. Anything happening up at my parents' cairn? Absolutely not. That's cool. Anything going on in the weird uh, cliff side? No? been a day since I, or a couple days since I played, so let's check. Anything happening with the weird stone? Nope. Alright, moving on. Heading on back down the hillside. Gonna go back home, perhaps. Check to make sure everything's alright down there. Uh, everything's not alright down here? Um... Hello, giant spacecraft? Um, yeah. <laughs> the thunderous sound, the heat you could feel, apparition so strange it could make you kneel. Was it a dream? No, it was real. I mean, no one else sees this. Like, it's big enough. The people in the town, even though the town was, was what, like a few miles away, they could definitely probably see that. Hey. What you doing? The cows look confused and scared, poor things. What was this terrible machine with wings? What indeed? Hey! Hey! Come back! Hey, don't you take my cows! Don't you take my cows! They took my cows, lifted them through the air, my draw my jaw dropped, my eyes a thousand yards there. Hey! Get, get, bring back my cows, you jerk! Suddenly the ship took off with a hiss. Hey, you're not getting away with this. Yes. You're definitely not getting away with this, you jerk. Come bring me back my cows. The ship was maneuvering just beneath my feet. My heart was pounding. I gripped my teeth. Jump! If I jump, I'd need quite some speed and to time my leap. Something, 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 something. Well, do it. Oh. Did we time it completely wrong? No. No, we're, we're alive. My head was hurting, truth be told, but at least I'd found my foothold. Now that I hadn't died, I had to find a way inside. You're walking up that steep incline pretty well. I guess you have trained walking on top of your roof. The ship was built by metal somehow. It sloped smoothly towards the bow. Yeah, I know, that's where I'm trying to go. The huge dome glistened in the sun. I looked for windows, but found none. Okay, so there's nothing up here. I'm just walking this direction for nothing. Okay, to the other side then. No? Okay, what do you expect me to do, game? I thought I clicked on everything. I could click on. Not over there. Not over here. Okay, what do you want me to do, Gabe? I have a stick. I'll beat the 
thing with a stick. See these things on the ground? These won't budge, I said with a grudge. Well, what if I put a stick in them? That didn't seem right. That hatch was sealed tight. The hatch had a small gap on one side, but it was still stuck no matter how I pried. Okay, well... A wooden spoon could snap if pushed in such a narrow gap. Alright, put some butter in it. That wouldn't do the trick. The gap was narrow. The butter too thick. For real? Do I have to check all, all these? For reasons undisclosed, every opening was closed. What do you want me to do, game? These won't budge, I said with a grudge. I could scratch and lift with all my might, but the hatch was still completely tight. All were closed. No handles exposed. Okay. Well, what do you expect me to do then? Come on, game. Tell me what to do. Go around to the back. There we go. It was unlike any aeroplane I'd seen. No propellers. It was a hovering machine. And I guess we go down the little ramp, huh? And try not to get blown by the steam. It was a strange looking panel with holes. There didn't seem to be any controls. We'll stick my hand in it. Put a spoon in it. There was no plan. I couldn't be... It wasn't being clever, but maybe the spoon could be used as a lever? The spoon stuck out a bit, but otherwise it was a perfect fit. Pull the spoon. That spoon. It seemed the lever was used to obstruct the steam coming from the duct. Well, thank you, spoon. You've been quite helpful. I bent down to investigate. It was a very hot metal plate. Uh, put some butter on it. Absolute genius. The butter went from a thick hard piece to a melted oil, a pool of grease. Now we know where to put the the butter. In that one it said there was a small crack. Like this one? Was it this one? Maybe the melted butter would grease the edges of this metal piece. The butter filled the edges and disappeared. That was my last chance, I feared. The hatch would still not budge. Maybe if I... Uh, maybe if you just fell right through it. Got it. Fudge! I was wondering what they were going to rhyme with budge. I had bruised my lip, but it was inside the ship. There was a sheet of or panel that I couldn't dismantle. I felt fear. I heard footsteps near. We'll, we'll get behind this pole. Um, go away from the evil, weird person. The old man spoke in a strange tongue, his voice and face far from young. Instead of trying to understand, I turned away and ran from the man. Yes, do that. Oh, there's another one. The queen-like figure stared with eyes so tense, she spoke in a language that made no sense. I told her frankly, I don't understand, your words must arrive from a faraway land. I think in that moment we both understood, speaking like this would do us no good. Um, you just exploded my brain? Her words sounded strange, but now they made sense. She asked me my name, her voice slightly tense. Um, you know what? I want to be brusque with these people because they stole my cow, but, you know, catch more f flies with honey than vinegar, and also they seem to be well more powerful than me, so let's not try to annoy them. Be polite. I told her the truth. My name is Ruth. Ruth, she said, her eyes narrow. It sent a tremor through my marrow. This is the Veda. Welcome aboard. 
You managed to get here of your own accord. I am Amrita. Call me impressed. Getting on board must have been quite a quest. What can I say? I faced my fear. I couldn't just stay and see my cows disappear. This youthful irreverence, I find it refreshing. This might have, might all have been a blessing. Um, tell me about my cows. I needed to ask, ahem, where are my cows and why did you take them? Your questions are many, I'm sure. Let me rather give you a tour. Come, she said, and gestured me to follow. Down the corridor, our footsteps sounded hollow. Okay, I'm going to make a prediction. They're powering the hovering of the ships with bovine flatulence. Cows are farting to lift the ship. That's, that's my guess. Welcome to the Veda. Come with me. This There is much to show and much to see. Um, what if I just leave and go in another room? But let's not. Um, I see weird alien cows. This is the Biodome, our holy retreat. Where the animals sleep and eat. The dome was filled with air and light. It truly was a magnificent sight. This is the high point of our tour. As you can see, your cows are secure. Yeah, but they're not your cows. They're my cows, so give them back to me, jerk. Um, animals? Wand? Cows? Like, yo, what are these weird animals? All I could say is, what are they? Once the milk beasts were plentiful and diverse, now these are all are the last four in the universe. Amrita's head hung low. Whoa, the last bull died eons ago. Um, what is your, what are you doing with that magic wand? What did you do to my head with your wand just before? I said. The brief pain notwithstanding, it gave you the gift of understanding. And what about my cows? I don't think I have any bulls in there. As I asked, my heart nearly skipped a beat. Are my cows merely food for your beasts to eat? And Rita laughed. Milk beasts are herbivores. They are peaceful and only eat grass, of course. I must see your cows. I got word from our herdsman. He says they're wonderful, quite the specimen. Okay. Well, first I'm going to go see this milk beast. The huge beasts were a sight to behold, peaceful and leathery. They surely looked old. Alright, cows. Hello, Licka. I let a huge breath of relief. They hadn't ended up as ground beef. This is Pal, our expert on bovine. He says, your cows are divine. His voice was old, I must admit. These are beautiful, a perfect fit. A perfect fit, you say? For what, if I may? Like, do you guys live on milk? Like, is the only thing you guys can eat? For the sacrifice, of course. He said without a remorse, oh no, we're not doing this game. Not sacrificing my cows, you jerk. What sacrifice? Tell me now, and no lies. Girl, please stop your crying. You see, our breed is slowly dying. Well, that's okay. You can die, and my cows can be alive. Through vision blurred, I heard, only your cows can save our herd. Okay, I give you three of the four. We're keeping Licka. My heart sank like a stone. You killed my cows to save your own? Not kill, per se, but a sacrifice must be made, I'm sorry to say. What does this sacrifice comprise, and why does it lead to my cow's demise? I understand what I'm saying is bold. We transfer youth from the young 
to the old. <laughs> to believe it must be seen, let me show you the age machine. Her voice was proud, she said. Ruth, this is the machine that regains lost youth. Your cows will save our holy herd when we have their age transferred. Why do you need my cows for this? It felt like being swallowed by an abyss. Yeah, can't you use anything? Like, what about chickens? A trade must be made for aging to reverse. These are the laws of the universe. Matter for matter, they must be the same. Age is an ember, but youth is a flame. Um, refuse. You can't make me. I can choose. I won't let you. I refuse. Amrita tilted her head and smiled. You act like you have a say in this, child. I do. I'll punch you right in your teeth. I'm taking my cows. I'm leaving this ship, I said with a stiff upper lip. The young believe they hold the power, but time will grind your bones to flour. Um, yeah, but that's okay. Because I will have had my time, and the, the youth will still have theirs. Can't be stealing. My knees went weak. I could not speak. Now punch her in the face. Walk, whispered a voice. I followed it without a choice. Don't you turn me into an old lady. Don't worry, Ruth. I will only take your youth. Bones bent, skin crawled, heart pounding, my mind appalled. Oh great, now we're an old lady. Erlen will never love us now. Um, excuse me, sir? I'm happy to see you up and awake. I'm sure you're confused. Your body must ache. Um, I can still punch you in the lip. <laughs> Look at our, our poor body. The man seemed understanding. I didn't have to explain that every part of my body was in excruciating pain. Why is my body different? I asked in dismay. And why has my blonde hair turned so gray? Your youth was stolen by our queen when she put you in the age machine. Well, can you help me get it back from her? Are you a nice person? His shocking words cut me like a knife. With a poof, I was at the end of my life. But what can I do? Can it be reversed? Can I get young again? Or am I cursed? I'd love to help you, but I have no years to spare. This ship is filled with elders, as far as I'm aware. Now please excuse me. I have lots of work to do. The feast is soon upon us, and I would hide if I were you. Let me take your juice here. Please don't touch that drink. It's not ready, I think. Um, well sir, can you please tell me more? I'm sorry, I had to exclaim. I never quite got your name. Oh, pardon my forgetful condition. Gopal's my name, the ship's physician. Right now I'm having trouble with the yeast. I'm preparing the brew for the upcoming feast. I hope, I hope I've left you less confused. Please, Ruth, may I be excused? No, please tell me more. It was a mystery I needed to unravel. What is this ship? And from where did you travel? Man, the smooth jazz in the background? It's just buttery. We have traveled for countless generations. Searching, visiting, and making new relations. Our history goes back a thousand suns. We have made countless galaxy runs. I was born long after the last bull di had died. For ages, Amrita had been our master and guide. We search, we pray, we abide the rules. But the future is bleak when we're kept as old fools. 
I looked around, suspicious. Why is Amrita, the queen, so vicious? Be careful, these walls have eyes and ears. You don't want to lose any more years. Amrita is our queen and supreme leader. She keeps us at bay, at bay and forces us to feed her. Everyone's afraid, we bow with closed lips. She controls everything with the staff she equips. She takes care of our herd, that's the truth. But most important for her is her own youth. She's taken so much, many years from our lives. When we are gone, she's the only one who survives. Why are the cows so important? Can you tell me that? Like, why are the milk beasts important to you? Tell me about the feast. I ask with slight apprehension, what is this feast you mention? When the milk beasts are rejuvenated, we celebrate. And Rita the Queen demands it, and we must fill her plate. Gopal's head hung. I wish it was I who got young. Um, goodbye. What about this beverage over here? Can I take this glass? I picked up the empty jar. Now where was the nearest bar? Uh, what about this distilling machine? It was an unfamiliar appliance, meant for some strange science. Um, hello, old people. The woman looked like a great-grandparent, just skin and bones, almost transparent. Were all of these elders here at rest a result of Amrita's youth-obsessed quest? Once these people had probably been agile, now they look close to death. So fragile. The sleeping person looked old and frail, breath so heavy, skin so pale. There was one bed left free. I hoped it wasn't left for me. Um, what about the button? Can we kill these people? Um, the button does nothing. Oh, hello. Hmm, everything seems to be in order here. I have to get back to my brewing beer. Oh, I get... So I need to call you away... And then while you're distracted, I get to take your beer. I hadn't been here long, but I guessed it meant that something was wrong. A glowing matter was shining so great, under the stuck, bent metal plate. Well, can I scoop it up in a jar? I felt like a fool. I needed a tool. What about this little piece right here? It was hard on my body to kneel, but I picked up a bolt made of steel. Uh, well, can I put it back? I didn't really have any plans, but I needed tools. Not just my hands. I need to stop clicking out of the screen. Alright, what's on this side of the room? Um, hello, person knitting a great big amount of stuff. I asked the lady who was sewing, Hello there, how is it going? Hello dear, I'm awfully occupied. Her face looked puffy, like she'd recently cried. I'm Ruth, the milkmaid, I said. I'm Anissa, I work with needle and thread. Um, what are you sewing? The sewing looked terribly painstaking. What, may I ask, are you making? Oh my stars, I'm going to be sick. This cape I'm making is far too thick. And Rita demands a flowing cape, but my fabrics are heavy and won't hold its shape. I can't make this cloth fly like silk in time before the Feast of the Milk. Um, what do you know about the age machine? Do you know a way to get young again? Maybe I could trade years with some younger men? The seamstress went quiet, her sewing slow. She muttered, I'm sorry, I wouldn't know. Okay, well... Hey, you there! I spotted a tuft of black hair. Hey, who's back there? A young person? Um, this is Halim, the last boy on board. He must be hidden until order is restored. Okay, I tell you right now, we're not taking Halim's youth. If Amrita finds out, all hope is lost. We must keep him a secret at all costs. When I grow up, I'll change the rules. I won't let the queen treat us like fools. I'll leave, my boy. Your time will come. But now I need you to keep mum. Now quick, go hide, Anissa cried. Um, 
This must be the engine of the ship. Look at our walk animation. It was a revolving spool spinning like a whirlpool. Okay, and what are these uh, things? I gave it a stare. There was nothing there. Nothing? Can't interact with that? Okay. What is about this thing? A burning flame with no sense of gravity was floating inside the huge round cavity. A crate, probably used for freight. Anything else you can tell me about the crates? Nope. Okay, can we go down the, the ramp, or is that too steep? Hello, sir. Um, what are you doing? Hello there, miss. I'm the mechanic, Viss. You look new. Have I seen you before? And what did you come down here for? I explained my dire situation. Viss shook his head for the whole duration. How can she demand our support when all she does is extort? If I wasn't this old, I'd disobey. My power tools would sure make way. Hey, can I get a tool and repair that thing? What are you repairing? What are you repairing, I asked, and looked at the strange thing. Uh, this is a hover sled, an older design. We used it to herd our bovine. There's been problems with the steering. It has a tendency to suddenly start veering. And of course, no one here can ride the sled. We're too old, and soon we'll all be dead. Do you need help to fix it? I can aid. You just have to teach me the tools of the trade. There's not much you can do to help, I think, unless you get me something cool to drink. Oh, I have a jar. What's this thing? He looked up and said with certain snide, To use that dimensional focuser, you need to be qualified. And what about this toolbox? Hey there! Let me set you straight. No one touches my void crate. Um, okay, what about these plans? It looked like some kind of blueprint. Symbol so tiny, I had to squint. Okay, let me look at it again. Um, so this must be the engine room, maybe. And we come up here, and there's some steam. Okay, so it lets out steam. I don't know. I saw the drill. Let's take the drill. Hey, lady, hold still. No one touches my power drill. What about the power saw? Don't touch that, he said with a scoff. That power tooth will rip your face right off. What if I just unplug this wire? Guess I can't do that. Okay, I'll get you a drink, sir. But first I need to hobble my way up to the top. What about this way? I can't I can't go this way. Okay, so I need to take his drink perhaps. Um first I hit the thing. Then I run back this way. Then I take his drink now that he's not watching it anymore. I could take that glass, yes, but that would create a big wet mess. Okay, we replace it with this glass. I switched glasses, hoping what I was doing wouldn't cause problems for the doctor's brewing. Hey, doctor. Um, nice empty glass you got there, sir. Nice way for me to click outside the screen again. Hey, what can you tell me about this Vis guy? Anything? Well, you can tell me about the cape. What's this cape you're making? And as his hands were shaking. The queen has explicitly expressed that this cape shall leave everyone impressed. If the cape does not appeal to the queen, she surely will put me in the age machine. But my fabrics are heavy as feather. Or heavy as leather, the cape must be light as a feather. Okay, we, we'll just put it through the dimensional uh, diamond down there, whatever that was. And then it'll somehow be all better. Okay, sir, I got you a weird drink. 
Can't promise it's not poison, though. Hey, he likes it. Look at him. He's drunk. You are a kind woman. Quite the first who's come down here to quench my thirst. Well, can I please have your um, tools now, sir? Yes, yes, we've heard about the huffer sled. There's not much do much you can do to help, I think. You've already helped by giving me that drink. Um, well, give me your drill, please, sir. What are you repairing, might I ask? That tool is meant for a specific task. Um, it's a, a panel on the floor that lets me levitate, I think. Um, this. I need to put this bolt back in. Hmm, looks like an elevator bolt to me. You can borrow my drill to get those free. Well, yes. Thank you, sir. I normally don't lend out my tools, but you've been kind, so I'm bending the rules. Thank you, sir. Any tips you need to tell me about how to make it work? How about this? How about instead, I just uh, unscrew this thing and crash the ship? I don't want to use that tool on the spinning, revolving spool. No, that's too bad. But you called it a spool. So could I put the yarn on there to somehow give it super anti-gravity powers? Hey, can you spin your yarn on this drill? Oh, I don't use power tools. I only use needle, thread, and spools. You said spools, I heard it. We've confirmed that the spools are a thing. Oh, sir, can't happen but to notice that uh, your, your glass is still empty, sir. All right, let's repair the elevator. If I open the metal cover, maybe the glowing matter, I'd discover. Can we just grab it? Grab the, the weird matter? Oh, we'll just put it in our chest. What is it? It was a strange soft material, lighter than air. Ethereal. Aha! Lighter than air? And what if we give it to... This lady over here. Ma'am, how about some lighter than air material? I took out the floating blob and asked her if it could help her job. That looks light, almost witching, but I can't use that blob for stitching. Okay. Well, how about this? How about we put it on the spool and we turn it into some kind of antimatter thread? How about that? Put out. I remember mother back on the farm when we had sheep. She was spinning yarn. That went quite well, I said, as I looked at the floating thread. Well, can I take it? The blob had spun to a thin, fine thread, but if I touched the spool, my fingers would shred. Um, what if I use the drill on it? The ethereal blob had spun into a yarn that weighed none. Can't fool me, game. I know what to do with a spool. Alright, how about I just give you some thread now? Oh my, what a wonderful thing! You brought me floating string! This should make the cape float! Her voice thick, a lump in her throat. Hello, Vic, or Miss. Better fix that elevator before the Queen sees, or else she'll reprimand us and have us up. On her knees. The cape is done, as you commanded. You did this yourself, single-handed? Yes, my queen. It took a while to shape this delicate textile. Well, for starters, I don't like the color. And for size, why make it smaller? 
Am I not a righteous queen who serves, protects, and keeps our grass green? Should I not be well dressed at least in time before the important feast? Of course. Without remorse, I work and pray to keep our herd alive for another day. I. Why, I ask you to do only one, do one easy job, and you do it carelessly, like a slob. Oh god, your cape, ma'am. You are not a person who cares. I think you owe me some of your years. No, attack her from behind. No, go. No. Oh, you absolute jerk. Hey, kids, stay there. Or, hey, kids, stay. There is another way. Listen, I have a plan. If you want to stop this madness, you'll have to be a man. Oh, we're going to trade you some... Give you some of our oldness. We're going to steal some, some of your youth. You help my mother. I'll help you. Just tell me what you want me to do. Look, time is of the essence. Let's skip your whole adolescence. Are you sure you want to go through with this? There's nothing about my childhood I'll miss. Alright, well, can't talk with you. Can't change your mind. I'm not sure how this works. I must confide. But please try standing on the other side. So, I'm not sure how to turn it on. Maybe we just count down. Three, two, one. Hey, we're back. And hey, you are Space Jesus. So how does it feel to be grown? Alim replied with a groan. I sure feel different, more old than new. Also, I see everything from a different point of view. It's such a long way down to the floors, and my voice seems darker, of course. Growing up is tough on body and mind. We'll catch up. Take a rest and unwind. Hey, who's this? Mother, what has she done? It's Helene, your son. I could hear Helene sobbing and crying. Even a man grieves when his mother is dying. These people had worries far bigger than mine. My resolve hardened. I'd force the queen to resign. I'd force the queen right off the side of the ship, right into the cold earth uh okay so send that one on a dark one i guess so i guess we'll end the episode we've regained our youth we've explored the ship a little bit and now we must save our cows that kind of almost rhymed so thanks for joining me i hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again next time